Hey, George Gill here, founder of The Measurement Doctor and creator of the Two Times Business Multiplier. Thanks for joining me today. Today's topic that I want to discuss is the metric bounce rate. Now, the term bounce rate has a specific meaning and we're going we're gonna to get into that and why it's important that you should be measuring it. But we also want to talk a little bit of how you can improve your bounce rate so that uh, you have less traffic leaving you. Now let me get into the first of all, what is bounce rate? What does it really mean? Well, first of all, it's really geared towards online businesses. So if you have a website and you're marketing to drive traffic to that website, whether that be through you know, social media, maybe paid advertising, even traditional marketing, they're landing on a certain page on your website. And that, that page might be the home page. It might be a sub page if you're sending them to a squeeze page. Or you might be naturally, organically attracting traffic through maybe a blog. If you're writing it on a consistent, regular basis through your blog, you're going to be attracting some organic traffic to that page. When that traffic lands, a certain percentage of that traffic takes no action other than hitting that dreaded back button. They're out of there. They don't spend any time on the page. They don't read the page. They don't fill out a form. They don't go on to navigate throughout the site, scroll down the page, or any of that. They just hit the back button and they're out of there. And that's referred to as a bounce. Now, if you have every one person, every out of every two people that come, one person bounces, in other words, immediately leaves that site, then you have a 50% bounce rate, which means that half of every single person that lands will leave, okay? So if we make that a little larger, 10 people come, five people take no action and leave. So you can start to understand why bounce rate is such an incredibly powerful metric and essentially extremely important to your business. But let's discuss the real problem here. The real problem as I see it is not the fact that you're only dealing with half the amount of people, if your bounce rate's 50%, half the amount of people that you attracted to your site. I think the real problem is, is that there's a disconnect, a disconnect beyond what the expectation of the audience had and when they landed on your site. And this disconnect not only causes a problem for your marketing, it causes a problem for you financially. Let me explain what that means. And we're, we're going to get into return on investment here, ROI. But really what I'm talking about is declining profits. And how does this work? Well, let's use that 50% bounce rate as an example. If you have a 50% bounce rate and you're selling a product, we'll use a value of a product, but this could be just as easily a subscriber, uh, building a tribe, um, adding people to your blog RSS, whatever goal you have for your business, for, for your online strategy anyways, it can be any of those, but we'll use an e-commerce site because then we can put a dollar value to this. Let's say for example, every sale you make is worth $50 and you're spending, you know, whatever the amount is, let's say $10 to, to drive 10 people to your website. Actually, you know what? That's just complicating it. Here's the reality. If you are selling something for $50 and for every sale that, that converts or buys on your, your website, if you have a 50% bounce rate, you're paying double for every sale, which means if I have two people come and only one of them is a potential buyer, then I've paid for two regardless if that one person buys or not. Okay, So that's a return on investment. If I lower that bounce rate, if I lower that to say um, 10%, therefore for every 10 that come, only one leaves, Okay, I'm paying just over one to one ratio for every buyer that I get. So the lower my bounce rate is, the lower my cost is, the higher my profits are, okay, from, from a dollar. I really complicated that somehow. Anyways, hopefully you get the, the gist of what I'm saying there. And it's easier with round numbers, so 50%. But essentially, the higher that bounce rate is, the worst it is for your business. Okay, so let, 
let's ignore profits for a second. Let's talk about the personal aspect of this. When, when I started in business, I actually started with a traditional retail store. And I'd run traditional advertising, newspaper, radio, um, TV, etc. Every once in a while, it was pretty rare, but every once in a while, someone would walk in. I was located in a plaza. And somebody would walk in the door and take a look around and immediately turn around and walk out. And that would horrify me. That would, like, what did we do wrong? Like, we have something set up wrong? Now, in, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you know, we're in a plaza. They just walked in the wrong door. But what if they didn't? What if they walked in and something turned them off? Maybe with a display, maybe the odor in the store, whatever the case may be. It, it really kind of hurt me for a second, right? Or if somebody would come in, walk around, and then immediately leave. Not stop at anything, just do a quick circle and, and, and leave. That, that hurt me personally. So the problem I think with online is you don't have that personal connection. You don't see somebody landing on your site and immediately leaving. But when you start to feel it like that, if you start to feel like you're responsible for that relationship, that connection between how they decided to come to your site in the first place and what they decided to do when they got there and if they left, if you take that with a, a little personally, you're going to very aggressively start to improve your bounce rate. Okay, so again, there's the financial side, okay, where you could be paying up to two or more, four times. If you have a 99% bounce rate, and I've seen it before, uh, you could be paying as high as that more than you need to for a lead, a subscriber, a, a, a sale, whatever your goal conversions are. And there's also the personal side that there's this disconnect, and this is your potential audience. I'm assuming that you're marketing in areas and targeting your ideal clients, your ideal audience. So if there's this, this huge disconnect between when they land and taking any or no action, then that's obviously a big concern. Okay, so moving on from there. Why do people bounce? Well, to understand why people bounce, why they leave, I, I've been kind of hinting at it by saying that there's a disconnect, but what does that really mean? Well, we have to understand why somebody comes to your website in the first place. And what I like to refer to the, uh, this as is it's all about them. <laughs> right? We don't go to somebody's website for them. We go to the, their website for us, right? We either want to solve a problem, okay, or we want to learn something, or we want to be entertained. Okay? It's usually one of those three or a combination thereof, and if we can achieve all three in one, then we're doing really good. So it's all about them. If we know that, if we know it's all about them, your marketing to them out, out, out in the web sphere or in traditional marketing to drive them to your website, told them X. Now, X is whatever you promised them, right? Maybe it's uh, a great price on, on tea. Maybe it, if you sell tea, maybe it's a to solve their, their photography question. Maybe it's to get a free tip on SEO or social media. Whatever the case may be, you promised them X and they landed on why. And that's where that disconnect happens. Okay, it's all about them. They wanted X, they landed, and they got Y, which is not what they wanted at all. So let's put this into real world. I was recently looking for a new set of brake pads for my bike. And, you know, I went searching on the web. That's what, that's what we do. I checked my social media channels. I, I threw out a, a request for anybody who had any recommendations. And then I went in, on to Google. I did a search. And there was paid ad. Okay, paid ad. Right? This is PPC. Click on the ad for the uh, brake parts for my bike. And I landed on their homepage. Now, it's all about me, remember. It was clearly a bike website. Clearly a, a bike website. And I hit the back button. I was out of there. Now, why did I hit the back, back button? It was about bikes. I needed bike brakes. I landed on the homepage. In a word or two, I'm lazy. 
As web surfers, we're lazy. The back button is far easier than me putting in the work and effort to search around and find my solution. That's your job. If you owned that bike website, that was your job. And if you're running those PPC plans, you should have driven me to the exact product that I was expecting. See, I had a disconnect, even though it was the same industry. There was a disconnect because it was easier for me to click back and hit the next ad than for me to search around your site and buy your product. Okay? So it's all about me and I'm lazy. And I'm your ideal client. Okay? Or maybe. Right? But whoever your ideal client is, I guarantee it's all about them and they're lazy as web spheres. Right? Or surfers. As surfers. Back button's way easier. Okay. So how do we fix this? How do we solve the bounce rate pro problem? Well, first of all, we need to be using a measurement tool like Google Analytics or another measurement tool that's measuring traffic coming to our website. Okay, That's key. That's step one. Or, or that's, that's foundational. It's not even step one. Assuming we're using a measurement tool, then what we want to do is we want to identify the highest bounce uh, rate pages. So what pages are getting the most amount of traffic that's bouncing at the highest rate? We want to deal with the worst performing pages that are getting the most volume to make a large significant difference as quick as we can. Once we identify the page, then we need to identify and segment the source. So in other words, what source is sending this traffic to this page? Is it a PPC ad? Is it my Facebook page? Is it my Twitter profile that sending out links? Um, is it maybe a traditional advertising campaign and just putting my website on my ads? Wouldn't it be more key to actually put the specific URLs okay, to make it easier for me if I'm going to actually go through the trouble to type in your website? right? And you can use short URLs to make that even easier. But in an essence, we want to identify the source that's sending to those pages. And then step three is review and ensure the source, whatever's being communicated or marketed, is in line with where you're sending them, where they're landing. Okay? And if there's an issue there, start there to solve the problem. Get those two things in line. Okay? Remember, take this personally. Somebody landed on your site that you paid, worked, or sweated for to try and drive them to you, and I'm going to assume they're your ideal audience because you're targeting them, okay? And they left immediately. Take this personally. And if that doesn't affect you, if you can't get your heart into it, then realize that you're killing profits and your ROI, your ROI is hurting from this, okay? Finally, if money isn't important and you can't take it personally, then shoot for at least happier, more engaged user experience. And if you reduce that bounce rate, then I guarantee you're on your way to achieving that. Okay? So, um, leave some comments. Tell me, tell me what, you, what your bounce rate is and steps that you're taking to fix it. If you have any questions, by all means, leave them there as well.